So we're going to deal with these confounders in two different ways. We're going to use matching and we're going to use inverse probability weighting to deal with the effects of these confounders and the backdoor um, associations that they pass on. So we can close off those back doors by adjusting for these three things, income, temperatures, and health. And then what we'll be left with is the effect of mosquito nets on the risk of malaria, and it's an actual causal effect from observational data. So we'll move our DAG off to the side again, and let's do some matching. So the way we match with R, there's a whole bunch of different packages that let you match. Um, the one I find is the easiest is called Match It. It's actually written by Gary King um, and his team of, of political scientists. He's the one that wrote the paper "Don't Use Matching" or "Don't Use Propensity Score Matching," um, but he's he's all for matching. Like that's his thing. Um, so we're gonna load the library called Match It. Um, if you don't have it installed, you can go to the Packages panel, click on Install, and then type Match It with capital M, capital I. Um, and let's go ahead and click on Play to load it. So now we have matching, or we have the ability to do some matching. So we're going to come down and add a new section here called Matching. And we want to figure out what the closest points are. So in the lecture, if you remember, we had just two dimensions. We had age and education. Um, and we were trying to find points that were very similar in age and education that were both treated and untreated. We're going to do the same idea here, but we're using three dimensions now. So we can't really plot it. But what we're trying to do is find observations that have very similar confounder values. And so we want to find observations that have similar incomes, similar health, and similar nighttime temperatures, but some of them are treated with nets and some of them are not treated with nets. So we're going to find clusters of very similar people and match them and then only use those people in our regression um, to find the causal effect. Okay, so to do this, um, the function you use, let's add a new chunk here and we'll call this matching. Um, the function you use is called match it, which sounds fun and exciting. So match it, the way you use it is it, it's similar to regression. Um, what we're trying to predict is why people use nets. So the column in our data set is net. So we're trying to predict this net column based on the confounders. So we have income plus temperature plus health. And those are all column names in that nets data set. Um, we need to tell it the name of the data set to look at. So we'll say data equals nets. And then we can give some specific um, configuration um, options here. Uh, so we want to tell it to use nearest neighbor matching. So we're going to say nearest. Um, we're going to use Mahalanobis distance because why not? Mahalanobis. And we're going to say replace equals true. So this is slightly different, well, true. This is slightly different from what we saw in the lecture where we enforced one-to-one -one matching. So once a treated observation was paired with an untreated observation, neither of those observations could be paired with any other points. And so that led to some weird matches sometimes because um, closer dots had been taken up uh, earlier by other matches. Um, but if we say replace equals true, that means we now have one to many possibilities. Um, all of these um, options here, you can see them in the help file. So if I come to help and then search for match it, and spell it correctly. Um, if you scroll down, you can see all of the different options. Yeah, go away. Um, so there's the formula, it uses the same syntax as, as models. Um, the data set, and then here's all the different um, matching options for methods. You can do exact matching, full matching, genetic matching. That sounds neat. Um, Mahalanobis matching is one of them. You can choose distance um, or logit is kind of the default, but there's others probably listed further down in the in the file in the help file. Yeah, so all sorts of details, all sorts of things you can throw into it. Check the help file. Um, really, the way I figured this out was just um, they have uh, this manual here with a whole bunch of different examples, and I looked through the manual and saw the examples. So that's how I came up with this. 
Um, so right now, if I just run this, it will match, but it won't store the results of the matching. Um, it'll just show it on the screen, and then I won't be able to use it. So I want to store these results as an object. Um, so if I come up to the beginning of match it here, I can make a new object called matched data, and then set that equal to the results of match it. Um, one issue is that the indentation now is off. This data thing is supposed to be indented like right after that parenthesis there. So I could either come here and hit space a billion times, but that's tedious. Um, so if I just select all of this code and then press Command I or Control I, it will re-indent everything for me, which is great. So that looks nice. It'll still run if it's not indented. Like this is perfectly valid. Well, not that. Um, this is perfectly valid code. It's just kind of hard to read and, and ugly. Um, but if you don't do that and you just re-indent it, then you're good. Okay, so if I run this now, it will... Oh, I spelled it wrong. Mahal nobis. Mahala nobis. Now if I run it, it will match. Spelling matters. Okay, so it is now matched. So if I want to see the matches, I can come and look at the results if I just run this matched data line. So according to this, it found just in the data, there were 681 observations that used nets. There were 1,071 that didn't. Um, it was able to match these 681 with 439 untreated observations. That means there's 632 rows that aren't similar to the treatment people. So we can hypothetically just get rid of those 630 people and just compare the 439 to the 681. And this essentially simulates a treatment group and a control group in an experiment. It wasn't randomly assigned, but because we used these confounders, income, temperature, and health, that allows us to make the adjustments based on our DAG. Um, and so we can kind of legally throw away these unmatched data points and only work with the matched data. Um, so to do that, we want to use one more function here and do, uh, we'll, we'll call this one matched data for real. So this matched data right here, it hasn't thrown anything away. Notice how it says here, discarded is zero. It didn't do anything. It just knows that it's supposed to. So we're going to make a new data set called match data for real, where we'll actually throw everything away. And the function to do that is called match.data. And we're going to take our matched data. So we're taking this object here that has the matching in it, where it found all of the points. We're going to use the match.data function to throw away the points. And we're going to store the, the trimmed down data, the pre-processed data as this matched data for real data set. So if I run this line, now if you look over on the side here, I have a data set called matched data for real with only 1120 rows instead of 1752 rows. So if I click on it, it still has all the same columns in it, um, but it got rid of a bunch of um, rows. It added a new column here called weights um, when it does the matching thing, it actually generates some sort of weighting variable to determine how important each row is. It's kind of like the inverse probability score. Um, you can use these weights in the regression to kind of um, use matching better. Um, so that's, that's a, a value we can use. Um, so let's come and do some estimation now. So we did the pre-processing. We can actually do that. This is, we'll do a second level heading and say step one pre-process, where we actually manipulate the data, throw away stuff we don't need. And then step two is we're going to estimate using the pre-processed data. So step two, estimation. OK, so we're going to insert a new chunk here. And so to estimate, we're going to use this data set. But we're going to use the same simple regression model, where we want the effect of mosquito nets on malaria risk. The only difference is we're not using the full data, we're using the matched data, where we use the confounders to match data points that were very similar. So I'm actually just going to copy this so I don't have to retype it. And we're going to make a new object called model matched. And this is going to be equal to this linear model with malaria risk explained by net. But instead of data equals nets, 
we're going to say data equals matched data for real. And I'll hit enter here because that line's getting kind of long. And then we want to see the results of it. So I will say tidy model matched. Okay, so if I hit play, here's our new results. Before, we were, ha we were finding a negative 16 point difference in malaria risk. Now that we've accounted for confounding and used um, our confounders to match the data, our estimate is now down to negative 12, um, which is more accurate because we know deep down inside, because I made this thing, um, the true causal effect is negative 10. So we're getting closer to that true causal effect. Um, we can get even closer even with this matching here that's kind of off. If we use that weights column that the, the matching algorithm made, we can use that weights column also um, to kind of improve the estimate here. So to do that, there's a, a argument called, I think it's weight or weights. There it is, weights, plural. And here you specify what column it should use for weighting. And I think the column name is weights. So we're say, we'll say weights equals weights. So if we run this now, now our causal effect is negative 10.5, which is a lot closer to the true effect of negative 10, which is cool because we were able to do that with just observational data. This wasn't a randomized controlled trial, but we were able to get close to the true causal estimate because we used the confounders to help match the data. Um, and create kind of fake treatment and control groups based on the confounders. Um, for the sake of reproducibility, I'm actually going to copy this. We'll have two different models because in the end we can compare all of the models all at once. Um, so this is going to be our this is going to be a model without the weights, and then this is going to be called model matched weights. Let's say WTS. And notice how the indentation is off. So I will select that and press Command I just to fix the indentation. And we want it to show model matched weights. So now if I run this chunk, it will do the regular matching um, using just the plain match data. And then if we do this one, it'll use the match data, but also use that weights column. And it should show both of these regression results. So there's negative 12, and there's our negative 10. Cool. Oh, and for best practices, we need we should probably name this chunk as um, matching models. And did I name this chunk? I did, matching. So the nice thing about that now is if I click on this um, little table of contents, you can see what's going on. We load the data, and then there's the chunk. And then here's the naive correlation isn't causation. There's the chunk. And here's our matching stuff. Um, so that is matching. Um, so fun and exciting.